Welcome to part two of rebuilding a Stuart Models twin launch model steam engine and it's time to take everything off the crankshaft. Obviously I can't do anything with the crankshaft with all these parts hanging from it. I'm a little bit worried about this crankshaft to start with. I don't like the look of it or the way it felt when I put it in the lathe. But nevertheless I'll have to find out as I go. The first parts to be removed are the eccentrics and the eccentric sheaves. The first eccentric sheave, complete with its pulley, comes off very easily. The second one needs to have the eccentric strap removed in order to get to the grub screw, and then I can remove that too. And here it is in the box. And the next thing to go is the first of the connecting rods. Very simple job to unbolt, nothing complicated here. I would always put it back together to make sure the mating surfaces are in the same position as when they were removed although on this engine it is particularly obvious, and I'm going to throw these away. These special washers, for making sure that nuts and bolts do not come loose, really have no place in a model steam engine. They're completely overscale and very unnecessary. If any viewers watching this are worried about the nuts and bolts coming loose, which of course they can do, then some Loctite thread lock is the answer. I don't mean Loctite 603, 638, 601, the bearing retainer, that would be disastrous you must use a special thread lock that stops nuts and bolts from working loose. If you need any more information on specific Loctite products, I would suggest that you visit the Loctite.com website. There's a lot of information on there, and it's far better than emailing me to ask me. Whilst on the subject of emailing, I'm not wishing to moan, but I would be grateful if people would stop emailing me and asking me for opinions and advice on their engines. If you want to fix an engine, then yes, I will give you a quote. But if it's free advice you're after, or a valuation for your model, I'm sorry I can't help you. It just takes too long. And while I've been talking about emails, on screen at the moment is this strange pulley thing. And the pulley is also part of the fitting for the eccentric sheave. It's silver soldered to it, and it's very well made. And it's not made out of brass, it's made out of some very, very hard bronze. The owner of the engine has asked me to remove it because he has no use for it. No place for a pulley like this on a steam engine of this type, unless it's to drive a generator, but this is going to go in a boat, I believe. And he wants to use a mechanical lubricator and possibly a water pump. And you can't drive either of those successfully from a pulley like this, because the side pressure for one thing on the pulley would put stress on the crankshaft you can do without. Removing the pulley was quite simple. I just put a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter brass bar in the chuck and then I clamped the pulley to the brass bar with the grub screw. Then all I had to do was simply part off the pulley and go all the way through the brass as well. Obviously a brass mandrel is not as strong as a steel one so you have to be very careful and feed him very slowly. And in no time at all the pulley has ceased to exist and so is the end of the brass mandrel. As this is a very small parting tool, it tends to wander slightly. So to make sure that what's left of the pulley is nice and square, I fitted a knife tool in the holder and took a very fine cut across the front, and it has to be a fine cut, because there are two threaded holes in what's left of the pulley, and the purpose of these two threaded holes are to take grub screws in order to lock the eccentric sheave in the correct position. But one of these is very, very close to the edge I'm cutting, so I'm being extremely careful not to take too deep a cut and destroy the part by cutting into the hole. In this clip, I'm removing the eccentric sheave and its locking ring from the stub mandrel. And as you can see, it looks okay. So that's the first job completed, and a very simple job too, getting rid of the pulley. Usually when I remove parts from a steam engine, I will put them back together in the same way as they were taken apart. If you do it the wrong way, like this, this is what happens, and you can get very confused, particularly if you don't fasten the parts back together and you just have a box full of bits. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, finding the parts that fit together. Anyway, this part's going back together in exactly the same position as it was before I took it apart. There's some damage on one of the valve gear linkages, so I thought in these early stages, I'll sort of put it right as I go, and the first thing to do is to file out the mark as far as possible. This is called draw filing, where I'm using the file sideways, followed by rubbing the part for quite a while on some coarse emery cloth. I've speeded up the video because it's quite tedious as this bit. 
After a little bit more draw filing, it's time to rub the part on some wet or dry paper. This is 400 grit wet or dry paper. I'm using it dry. Then I use the wet or dry paper to get into the corners. And as you can see, it looks much better. There's still a very small mark on it, far smaller than it was originally. I could remove it entirely, but the part may get too thin. For now though, I'm going to leave this part as it is and put it back in the little red box. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.